RMS level versus LUFS level versus peak level and why you should use, I don't know if I wanna say wh what you should do because this is super subjective, but I guess today I wanna to walk you through why I use the, the levels that I use, the measurements that I use, and when I use one over the other because I think it's pretty important actually. Let's get into it. Now in my very last video, which is going over my signature preamp release, which by the way, all the signature preamps sold out in 22 hours and seven minutes. So huge thank you guys to that. I hope those of you that were able to get one, I hope you love it as much as I do. But in that video, there was a whole bunch of comments when I was comparing uh, it on the mix bus and I level matched with peak levels instead of RMS or LUFS. And there are quite a few people saying that I should have used LUFS. And I thought this is a wonderful opportunity for me to go over when to use which units of measurement so that way it will actually help you make the best decisions. So first we have to go over what they are. RMS level is an averaged level. So you play music for a piece of time, for an amount of time, and it averages the level based on current. It's, a, it's an electronic measurement. Now, LUFS is a measurement over time. It's integrated just like RMS. However, it's based on how we perceive music or sound as humans. So while RMS is technically more correct, uh, this is why most everyone has abandoned RMS and everyone goes by LUFS for the most part nowadays because it's more accurate to how we actually hear. Now, peak level is the very loudest moment in whatever section of music or audio that you have played. What is the very loudest single moment? And then that is the loudest peak level. Now, I've discussed this in other videos that we as humans are hardwired to perceive anything that is louder as better, which is why it is always important to level match stuff when we're comparing something to something else. But it's not quite that cut and dried. Now, lots of people think that you should use LUFS uh, or RMS when comparing two sources. Let's say that you're comparing an EQ and you have an EQ set this way and an EQ set this way and that you should level match those using RMS or LUFS and then when you go back and forth between them, they're level matched so you can more accurately hear what the difference is. And while I do think this is a great way to do it, it's not that cut and dried and let me show you why. Okay, so what I wanna show you guys is an example of how frequency and and uh, the frequency response of a particular thing can drastically change the level that it reads out in LUFS. So I've got two tracks here, same piece of music uh, from my preamp video that went up last, and I've just duplicated them, they're exactly the same. And on one track, I have a high shelf, a uh, 10 dB high shelf at 5K, and on the other one, I have a 10 dB sh a low shelf at 200 Hertz. And so before we even look at numbers, I'm just gonna play these for you and uh, let's see which one you think is louder. So here's the low one. And high. Low. Now, again, depends on what you're listening on. If you were listening on your phone, 100% of you chose the high EQ as the louder one. If you're listening on laptop speakers, probably the same. If you were listening on a pair of studio monitors with a sub and the sub is way too loud, then maybe you chose the low EQ as the louder one. But let's take a look at the actual level. So I'm gonna let it play all the way through. You can keep an eye on the level over here so that way we're gonna get an integrated LUFS. Here we go. It's topping out somewhere about 16.5, minus 16.5. Let's switch over to the low. Oh. Somewhere about 12.5, minus 12.5. Oh, we're getting up into 11 there. So we're nearly 4 dB louder on the low. So let's just, let's pull this down. Let's pull this down by a little over 4 dB. So that way they are technically the same volume. Here we go. Here we go. And switch over to 
switching to the high. Then now when they are level matched on the meter, the high sounds way louder. Now this is a really extreme example. I don't think anyone would ever compare stuff this drastic, but the point I'm trying to make is because we are hardwired to perceive anything as louder, as better, then it kind of throws a wrench in the whole level matching thing anyway, uh, because the different frequency responses totally change how they read on a meter. So before we get on to which measurement you should use when you're testing different things, I just want to thank Sweetwater for sponsoring this video. There are links down below for literally everything that I use. Uh, and so you can go check out all the gear that I use on every mix. And you don't have to just pick up something that's on that list. Anytime you need any piece of gear of any kind, you can jump on any one of my videos, click on any one of the links, purchase anything you need from Sweetwater. It goes a long ways to help support this channel and I very much appreciate it. Thank you, Sweetwater, for sponsoring this video. So because the character of the sound drastically changes what the meter reads in RMS and LUFS because low end takes up so much more energy than top end, that means if you're comparing a dark sound to a bright sound, the bright and you level match them, the bright sound will always sound louder which runs the risk of us picking the bright sound over the dark sound just because we are hardwired to perceive everything as louder as being better. Now that doesn't mean that I, I think you shouldn't level match stuff. I just want to point this out that it's just not quite as cut and dried as just throwing a, a limiter on and looking at the level and oh well they're the same level so it's got to be accurate. It's just it's really not that cut and dried. But we don't really have a much better way of doing it so if you want to level match this is still the best way when you're comparing uh, two sources to each other when you're talking about like comparing different preamps or different EQ curves or you know maybe uh, different guitars maybe you're playing one guitar and then you're playing another guitar this is a perfectly valid way to compare them so when should you use peak level in order to compare something in order to a b something but there are a couple situations in which I will always choose to use peak level over LUFS or RMS. And it almost always has to do with the amount of saturation. If I'm testing saturation plugins, if I'm testing hardware and the purpose of the hardware is to add color and saturation, then I will always level match based on peak level. And here's why. When I'm using saturation, usually I'm not just trying to make it dirtier. Usually I'm trying to reduce the dynamic range in a way that I don't have to use compression or I can use less compression. Now reducing the dynamic range means the loudest part of the signal and the quietest part of the signal become closer together much like a compressor or a limiter would do, but we use saturation for this exact same thing. Saturation will add color, saturation will add of course distortion and saturation itself, and saturation will also increase apparent volume or increase LUFS. So most of the time when I'm using saturation on my mix bus or on individual tracks, the reason I'm doing it is because I want to decrease the dynamic range, which makes everything louder and have more impact in addition to whatever color things it's doing. But when I'm using saturation on mix bus, what I'm really trying to do is see how much louder I can get that mix without imparting too much audible distortion. That is its singular function to me when I'm using saturation on the mix bus. How much can I raise the LUFS uh, without it sounding too dirty? So the only way to do this is to use peak volume. So you would have two different examples, two different mixes say, and you're using either two different plugins or two different pieces of hardware, and you're trying to figure out which one is the right move. So what you do is you start raising the saturation on both of them and you get them as dirty or as loud as you can. This is how I do it. I get the, I push them both as hard as I can until, okay, that's too much saturation. Let's back it down a notch and then push this one up. Okay, that's too much saturation and then back it down just a touch. So that way I've now taken both of these plugins or both of these pieces of hardware to the maximum amount of saturation that is appropriate for the song. And then when I turn both of the tracks to the exact same peak volume, 
I can then hear which saturation tool is doing a better job of saturating, reducing dynamic range, and making everything louder because that's actually what I'm trying to accomplish here. Which one of these two things does that better? And it's for that reason that when I'm testing stuff on Mixbus, it is almost always with the peak volume, not with LUFS, because I can clearly flip back and forth and hear which one sounds louder. In addition to the fact that they have different characters, some saturations are thicker, some saturations are thinner, and so measuring with LUFS, again, like I already showed, it just doesn't do that much because the thicker one will always tend to push the, the volume up in terms of like what it's reading out on your limit. So then we have to quickly talk about the loudness wars because inevitably someone's gonna drop in the comments, well, what? who gives a crap about any of this because Spotify is gonna turn it down to minus 14 anyway. So do we really need to worry about getting loud because everyone's just gonna turn it down? And I've talked about this in other videos, but I promise you the loudness wars are not over. If anything, they are raging harder than ever before because every one of us who actually does this for a living is putting out the loudest stuff we've ever put out in our entire careers. Because no matter what Spotify says, when they turn it down to minus 14, if you deliver them a master at minus 14, your music is going to sound quiet ultra quiet compared to everything else. I made this mistake. I, I did probably 10 or 15 songs. Spotify announced that they would do minus 14. So for 10 or 15 songs, I start. I was mastering everything at minus 14. And then as those songs started getting released and I'm listening to them on Spotify and I'm like, why is this so quiet? What is happening? And the songs just kept coming out so quiet and my clients were pissed and like everything was a train wreck. It's, I don't know what's happening over there, but the loudness wars are still raging and loudness has won. Actually, the loudness wars are over. Loudness won in stereo. Not for Atmos, that's an entire different conversation. So my goal when I'm working on a piece of music for release is still to have get it the biggest, loudest, most full, most impactful thing that I can possibly do. Saturation helps me do this, and I use saturation in a million different stages throughout the mix. And this is part of the reason why I don't really level match hardly anything ever throughout a mix. I just go with my gut. Now, if I'm really scientifically testing something, then I will level match, but I don't do that in a mix session. All of that scientific experimentation happens in a different time, on a different day, not when I'm trying to be creative. So in the context of a mix, I'm never level matching anything because I already know what is gonna affect what because of my tests that I've done on a different day. I hope that made sense. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment and subscribe if you haven't yet already. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.